In a pattern that we've seen repeated uh, in other areas, when the president is asked, what uh, do you have to do, what do you have to deliver to African Americans uh, in the second term, he often runs away from the question. Does he have to, and has he had to, run away from his own race? I don't think so. This president is proud of who he is. He's proud of what he is. You know, he's proud of his family. He's proud of their heritage. Uh, and he's somebody who represented the South Side of Chicago and, and, and understands, gets it you know, what, what life is like and how tough it is and the barriers that are there. But at the same time, this president has not, you know, enjoyed the racial discussion. He's not someone who often it feels like race has kind of chased him. I told this president early on that I'll be the head of the NAACP. He can be the head of the country, you know, that, that we understand in the civil rights community that we have a responsibility to organize, to represent, to raise tough issues and to force action. While it's meaningful when he comes out and says, if, if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon, right? More than affirmation, we need action. Like, if he really believes uh, that he can build consensus to get m more money into the economy, to create more jobs, by talking about the pain that is you know, universal in so many communities um, across lines of race, uh, then we'll support him in that. 70% of Hispanic voters and 70% of Latino voters voted, for, I mean, and 70% of Asian voters voted for Barack Obama. Um, did that surprise you? And secondly, does it suggest the possibility of a person, a people of color political coalition? It, it wasn't surprising. I think if you kept on going, you would also see that women voted much higher for him, uh, that whites who were in trade unions and more generally whites uh, who are ethnic voted much higher rates for him. What all those communities have in common, the people of color communities, women voters, whites and trade unions and so forth, is that the far right wing tried to light all of our houses on fire at the same time. I believe their theory must have been that we would all run in different directions. We'd all run back to our individual houses and try to put out those fires. But instead something else happened. It herded everybody together. People came together and said the only way to overcome this situation is to say all for one and one for all. Have you been disappointed by the number of white males appointed to the cabinet in the second term so far? Chuck Hagel seems like he could do a very good job. John Kerry as well. Certainly we would have rather seen Susan Rice and frankly would have seen, liked to have seen more of a fight over Susan Rice. But the, the most important thing is, is, is the content of folks' character. I think if we had a number one aspiration, it's probably to see a, a black woman appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and, we, and we hope that the president will get that done this time. Has the nation's first African-American or biracial president advanced or changed the race conversation or racial understanding in America? Did you expect him to? Yeah, what, what changed in 2008 when we broke the color barrier at the White House for the first time in over two, you know, the, more than two centuries our country has existed is that the aspirations of every child in this country rose. Um, I can say as a black guy with a kind of funny last name, that when the black guy with a kind of funny last name <laughs> becomes president of the United States, that everybody realizes that every child says, I can be president. The challenge now is on us. Now that we have kids who, some of whom can be president, we actually have to do everything we can to make sure that our kids uh, are ready to rise to the challenge.